Hi there, here's a topic video on labour demand as part of AS Microeconomics. The demand for labour is basically how many workers a firm is willing and able to, uh, to hire at a given wage rate in a given time period. The key thing is that the demand for labour is derived from the goods and services that labour produces. Now, typically the labour demand curve is similar to a demand curve for goods and services. Of course, we're thinking about labour as a factor of production here. So on the y-axis, we have the wage rate, and on the x-axis, we have the quantity employed, the number of people employed, E. Our labour demand curve is normally downward sloping. So at lower wages, more people are employed, and at higher wages, fewer people are employed. So therefore, we tend to assume there's an inverse relationship between the demand for labour and the prevailing wage rate. For example, if the wage rate's very high, it's probably costly to hire extra workers. The marginal cost of taking on an extra worker could be, could be pretty expensive. But when wages fall, labour may become relatively cheaper than capital. And uh, as in most markets, think about a substitution effect uh, and an income effect. So if the wages go down, for a given budget, a firm can employ more people. And uh, given that capital could be a substitute for labour, wages fall, then the labour become, could become more cost effective compared to capital equipment, for example. So higher wages cause a contraction of labour demand and lower wages cause an expansion down the labour demand curve. What about some of the factors that affect the demand for labour? Again, keep in mind, key revision point, the, de the demand for labour is derived from the goods and services that people who are employed actually then produce. So what are some of the key factors that, have, that cause a shift in labour demand? One of the most important ones is the level of labour productivity, for example me measured by output per person hour or output per person employed. So if labour is fairly productive then the, the unit cost of the output that labour produces will be, will be lower and potentially the value of the output that they create will be higher. High labour productivity can generally increase labour demand. Second key factor is the relative cost of using capital. So if capital becomes relatively cheaper, some firms may replace workers or labour with capital machinery. For example, in the security industry, they might replace security workers with cameras or other forms of security device. Another uh, important cost is the cost of employing people in terms of payroll taxes. So in the UK we have national insurance contributions paid by both the employee and the employer. And if they go up, then it can become more expensive to employ people. Conversely, the government's recently cut national insurance contributions if firms take on long-term young unemployed workers. That reduces the cost of employing people and will increase labour demand. Very important to realise that the demand for labour is linked to the final output they produce. So in most labour markets that we look at, some of the demand for labour is cyclical in nature. It tends to go up in a, an economic recovery. It tends to fall sometimes in a slowdown, but obviously in a recession. Another key factor is the relative productivity of labour-saving technologies. It's not just the cost of capital, but also the efficiency of capital. And as uh, robotics and new technology becomes more widespread in many industries, perhaps many jobs will be lost. Although equally, you also have to think about the people who train workers to use, to use new technology, people who make the new technology and those who install it. A really final important point is that the macro economy has quite a big effect on labour demand. The external macroeconomic environment has a significant impact. For example, my, my picture here shows the global steel, a uh, big steel works in, in Wales. We've seen in recent months how a fall in the world price of steel caused in large part by there being chronic excess capacity in the industry has threatened many thousands of jobs in the UK steel sector. And so the demand for labour in steel has been shrinking. Largely, it has to be said, because of the external macroeconomic environment. So how do we show shifts in labour demand? Well, it's very similar to your price theory diagram. The labour demand curve will shift position. When there is a change 
in one or more of the conditions of demand. Take, for example, a, a cyclical recovery in the economy, increasing demand for a product causes the labour demand curve to shift out from LD1 to LD2. A higher productivity of labour would also have a similar effect. Perhaps a government subsidy to allow businesses to employ more workers. All of those would shift labour demand out from LD1 to LD2. However, as we just discussed, a recession or a significant slowdown in demand could cause the demand for labour to shift inwards from LD1 to LD3. A couple of uh, charts just uh, by way of illustration of what we're talking about. I said that the demand for labour in many industries was cyclical. And I think a really good example of this is the construction industry in the UK. Take a look at the number of people in work in the construction, the building industry in Britain, it rose pretty strongly from the period 1997 through to 2007. Indeed, over that period, more than 500,000 extra people were employed in construction. But then, as you can see, from 2008 to 2009, employment fell quite sharply, particularly in 2010. And in fact, the industry lost around 300,000 jobs in that period. Construction picking up again, as you can see in 2015, but employment still below the level in 2009. So there's a good example of where employment, uh, the demand for labour, has a cyclical dimension. And if we take a long term view, here is a, a graph showing a structural decline in the demand for manufacturing jobs. This is an aspect called deindustrialization. Take the UK's uh, manufacturing employment since 1978. In that year, nearly 7 million people were employed in manufacturing. Deep recession in the early 80s, deep recession again in the early 1990s, another recession from 2008. We can see that although it's stabilized in just in the last few years, particularly in things like car making, Less than 3 million workers are now working in what is called the manufacturing industry. In other words, the level of manufacturing demand for labour has more than halved over the last 35 years. Big issues, of course, to do with robotics, automation, to an extent are jobs at risk by automation. Quite an interesting survey came out from Citigroup using World Bank data a few weeks ago. In fact, uh, in the UK, around a third of jobs are reckoned to be at risk from automation. Uh, that's a, less than the United States, uh, less than the OECD average. Uh, critically, in countries like Ethiopia, a lot of jobs, perhaps up to four-fifths of the workforce, have their jobs at risk of automation. And I think that's pretty much because of the, of the, uh, the likely increase in automation, capital intensity, in what is highly labour intensive farming in the next 10, 20 years. Certainly an issue to keep a keep abreast of. So here we go. Uh, we've just been looking at uh, some of the key factors affecting labour demand.